and the high rises of Hong Kong, you can find yourself in an intriguing region that seems to have been designed by nature for adventure. And the gateway to China's deep south is the sultry, scenic city of Guilin. By the standards of Chinese cities, Guilin is tiny, only 600,000 people. So it's a pleasure to walk around through the good-natured cacophony in the centre of the city, with all this high-intensity retail going on. I've chosen to stay at a respectable distance from the town in a hotel that's a tourist attraction in its own right. At a resort whose motto is the goal of life is to be happy. The place to be happy is here, the moment to be happy is now. And guess what? It's an all-inclusive resort with a telltale bracelet. The Hotel of Modern Art has more than 100 sculptures around the grounds and offers activities as diverse as art workshops and rock climbing. Choose between creativity and geology. Back in the city, the character of the countryside here is defined by cast formations, turrets of limestone that from a distance look like misshapen teeth and on closer inspection turn out to be draped with forest. And they infiltrate all the way in to the city centre. A major cultural relic no, not me, the official status of Solitary Beauty Peak, the mountain that is at the spiritual heart of Guilin, with a temple at the top, which was originally only for the aristocracy. And it is also officially Guilin's number one mountain, as you can tell. <laughs> During my time in China, I've noticed that one or two people enjoy their food. And here in Guilin, there's a thousand dishes on offer, including quite a lot of seafood, thanks to the coast being not far away. I call this Squid Row. Time to get travelling beyond Guilin. The Li River has its source high up on the Cat Mountain, and it flows to the South China Sea. But the 50 miles stretching from here downstream to Yangshua contains some of the finest scenery in China. It's every traveller's dream, a spectacular journey that also gets you from A to B. Chinese banknotes carry pictures of beauty spots from around the country. And for the 20 renminbi note worth about two pounds, it's the Li River here in the village of Xinping. I must say, the real thing is even more beautiful in full colour widescreen. Whatever you invest to get here, it's worthwhile. All rivers lead to Yangshua, a town that came to prominence as a backpacker's haven hidden deep in the hills of southern China. It's changed a fair bit over the past few decades, but remains a relaxed antidote to city life and offers a wide range of experiences. West Street began life catering for Western backpackers, but now attracts many Chinese visitors too. And whatever you're after, if you can't find it here, you're probably better off without it. Pizza, massage, karaoke, just don't try them all at once. I'm staying outside town at the Yangshuo Mountain Retreat, which was founded on strong environmental principles and employs more than 30 people from local villages. It also has a fabulous location. I checked in when it was dark, and this is the view I woke up to in the morning. The room has impeccable sustainability credentials. The furniture is all handmade from local bamboo. In the bathroom, there's none of those throwaway toiletries they assume you'll bring your own, or they'll lend you some. And it took me a while to work out what this is. I thought it was something to do with the rubbish disposal, but in fact, it's a tap. 
local bamboo also provides the means to enjoy the scenery from the river, the Dragon River. It happens to be nine o'clock on Monday morning and I can't think of a better way to start the week than drifting through some of China's finest scenery in the capable hands of Captain Pan while wearing an attractive life vest. And then Captain Pan had a better idea. <laughs> <laughs> 